Hey everybody, this is Jerichos, and welcome back to Tales of Fantasia. Last time, we completed our descent through the Moria Mine. We were searching for some pact rings, and we found them, although they were a bit broken. And as a bonus, we got Maxwell as a summon spirit. He's going to be really handy. But now, we're going to start heading back to Alvanista, because maybe Lundgrum... We'll have an idea about what we can do to possibly fix the Pact Rings. So, it's a bit of a trek, but luckily Alvanista is nice and close by, so I'm not actually going to cut. Except for, of course, the mandatory required battles that it won't let us avoid. So, we want to head back and enter Alvanista. Now, let's head on up, go into the castle, and let's see if I can remember how to get back to Lundgrim in the Sorcery Lab. This castle always confuses me a little bit. I'm pretty sure I have to go all the way up and then start going down again. Uh, was it this one? Hey, I managed to remember. Okay, let's talk to Lundgrim. So, you made it back in one piece. By the looks on your faces, I take it that your search bore some fruit? Yes, we reached the lowest level of the Moria Mine. Oh ho, that's very impressive! If you reached the lowest level, you must have gone through quite a lot. We were able to locate the Pact Rings. So then, you can finally form the Pact with Luna? With an uninspiring response like that, I take it there's still some obstacle? This isn't a good place for it. Let's finish this discussion outside. I see. I think I've got the general idea of the situation. So you need to find a way to repair those broken rings. Do you know of any possible way? I have a close friend named Edward. He's a sorcerer and also serves as an advisor to this country. He once did research on the Pact Rings. Where would we be able to find him? Cross the bridge southwest of Alvanista. His mansion lies just west of there. Just a moment. Let me write a letter for you. Thank you very much. We get the letter of introduction to Edward. Now then, if you'll excuse me. Best of luck to you. Well then. Shall we make our way to Edward's house? What's wrong, Clus? It... it's nothing. Just something buzzing in my ears. Swordsman! You are not worthy to wield such a thing! Clus? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just hearing things. Well, that's not cause for alarm at all. Don't know who that female voice was that was speaking to Kles in his mind, apparently, but... I guess we'll just ignore it for now. What's the worst that could happen? So, we want to head to the southwest, go over this... long bridge that's right next to the city and immediately you can see the mansion so let's check it out this is a fancy looking house so let's knock on the door excuse me can I help you with something my name is Clarth first of all take a look at this letter we were hoping to meet with Edward. Is he home? My, an introduction from Lord Lundgren. I'm Edward's wife. Please, call me Sif. I'm very sorry, but my husband isn't home at the moment. Well, our business is a bit urgent, actually. Since you had an introduction from Lord Lundgren, I suppose I can tell you this. 
Actually, my husband knows that in this coming war, Alvinista will be all but powerless to turn the tides of battle. The true purpose of the journey he recently left on is to find individuals capable of defeating Deus. Do you know what he was headed? I think that means where he was headed. I believe that he said his first destination was Freyland. Freyland? It's the continent that lies east of Alvinista. Thank you, Sif. If, if you have the opportunity to meet my husband, could you give him a message for me? Just that, that we're all doing well here. Of course, when we meet him, we'll be sure to give him your message. We'll have to hurry if we want to catch up to him. Shall we head for Freyland then? Yeah, Freyland! Where all the village was, where we just were. This is gonna be a little bit of back and forth. But before we head toward Freyland, uh, I am turned around. There we go. We want to head west from the mansion. And follow the path around. And you'll see a tent. Let's take a look here. What's going on? We've been on a journey seeking the meaning of life for the last 10 years. Uh, we still haven't found the answer. You're a swordsman? Here, you can have this Ogi text. I've already studied it thoroughly. And we learn Phoenix Storm. As you might guess, that is a combination of Rising Phoenix and Autumn Sandstorm. So, 48%, 8%, we're not going to be learning that one for a while. We've got a bunch of Ogis to eventually unlock. Well, in due time. Now, the next goal is we want to head all the way back to Olive Village. This time I am going to cut away, so I'll meet you over there. And with us arriving back in Olive, I can't believe how hot it is. Anyone traveling this desert must have stopped in this village. Let's try asking that man. Excuse me. What is it? Has a man named Edward come through here? Edward? Oh, yeah, that traveler came through just recently. Do you happen to know where he is now? He seemed to be in a hurry, like he had some business to take care of. I'd imagine that he probably made his way to the oasis to the southeast of the village by now. Thanks. If we leave now, we might be able to catch up to him. Let's hurry! So, now it's going to start the quest of tracking down Edward. So, let's start heading toward this oasis. You can see right here near the city. Hopefully we find him here. Well, first, we get a rune bottle. And I did not mean to leave the oasis. Go back in. And we also get a life bottle and a puppy. He's so cute. Edward? Oh yeah, he went to the oasis north of here. All right, we can see the way this is going. So head north and pass by that conspicuously large tower, whatever that is. Well, maybe we'll find out about that in time. And in this oasis, we have two things to investigate. A liqueur bottle and a chef. I dwell in the wonderful world of flavor. I want to share this flavor with as many people as I can. Would you like a taste of my world? Then let's get cooking. Learn how to make some fruit juice. Ugh, I would love to drink some fruit, fruit juice right now. Yeah, hanging out in the middle of an oasis is still pretty hot. And let's talk to this old man. See, have you heard of Edward to come by? Excuse me, but did a man named Edward come through here? What? What was that? I said, did a man named Edward come through here? You what? You want to find some snails? What? Snails? Just now, you asked about escargot, right? It was Edward. You only got the first letter right. 
That was a joke. If you're looking for Edward, he went to the oasis further north. Annoying old man pretending to be senile or not be able to hear us. Anyway, we head further north again to another oasis. Let's see if we can find Edward at this one. And I'm. I was about to say. Oh, hey! Here's a basilisk. This is that enemy I was trying to find earlier, the last enemy of this area. Let's go ahead and, you know what? Let's show off Maxwell against him. They're weak against water and wind, so you really want to use Undine or. Ah, Cyclone against them. Yeah, they have a lot of health, too. Come on. Should have switched him over to Undine after showing off Maxwell once, but hey, that took care of him. And we got a Basilisk Gale. That's pretty cool. Well, I was about to say, I was impressed we made it all the way to the, you know, this uh, oasis without running into any enemies, but then in the last steps before entering, we encounter Basilisk. Here we have Flare Mantle, pretty nice, and some little bush baby hanging out there. Also, a mental ring this is hiding in the trees there. You can just barely see it. What's up, guys? Do you know where Edward is? Now, but if you head off to the left, talk to this young girl. Edward? That guy said he was going back to Olive Village. Looks like we just missed him. Anyways, let's head back. Yeah, all that, and then we come back to Olive Village. It's kind of a wild goose chase. Edward should have made it back here by now. Let's try asking that man again. Excuse me. What is it? I know we asked before, but have you seen Edward since then? Yeah. Actually, I saw him head into the inn just a little while ago. Thanks. So maybe he's in the inn now. Edward, we're here to talk to you, and he's not here. Let's try talking to the innkeeper. Excuse me, but did a man named Edward come here? Edward? Yeah, he came here all right. He was searching for basilisk scales. Seems he was asking about them all over the place. Oh, they're used in that miracle cure, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm impressed you know it. But they're not easy to get, especially in large quantities. Basilisks? What are those? Mint, you just fought one. <laughs> they're a terrible monster for the people of the desert. Edward did leave a message here. He said that if anyone came here in possession of basilisk scales, let him know right away. After saying that, he bounded out of here again. If we can bring down a basilisk, we may be able to collect its scales. Hey, aren't those basilisk scales that you have there? But only a few of them, I see. With five or six of them, you can make a powerful medicine. Yet this little bit of extra dialogue she has only happens if you already have at least one basilisk scale in your inventory. Anyway, welcome. Will you be staying with us? Yeah, you know what? Let's heal up. Might as well top off our HP and MP, or excuse me, TP. And I'm going to stop by the item shop to buy a few specific items. Uh, let's see, go ahead and get out of here. Want to prepare ourselves for basilisk hunting. And one thing is we want to make sure we have some liqueur bottles. I didn't actually use it in that fight because I forgot, but we want to make sure we have a few because use it on Kles to prevent him from getting turned to stone. Stone is basically a KO if everyone gets hit. Also, restock on holy bottles, and I'm going to buy about 10 dark bottles. The reason for the dark bottles is they operate pretty much the exact opposite of holy bottles. Whereas holy bottles will prevent enemies from attacking you and make enemy encounter rate go down, dark bottles will do the exact opposite. They will increase the encounter rate. So when you're hunting monsters in a specific area, 
you pop a dark bottle and you'll run into enemies much quicker. I know the encounter rate in this game get higher, that's not usually what you want. The best thing to do is head over to those oases, uh, off in that, you know, the deep part of the desert. That's where you're more likely to encounter basilisks. So I'm going to go ahead and grind them off screen and get four more basilisk scales. So I'll be right back. And we're back. I got all five of the basilisk fangs that I needed. Let's make sure I didn't forget one. Yep, got five of them. Also, it seems that the developers knew you'd be grinding in that desert for a while because enemies in the desert drop both liqueur bottles and orange gummies so you can keep yourself safe and restock. Uh, also, everybody gained one level through the course of the grinding and Mint learned a new spell, Nurse. This is an amazing healing spell. It restores health to all allies, even if they're spread far away on the battlefield. It's not like an area of effect. And it restores kind of a lot, uh, about the same amount as heal does. So immensely helpful in boss fights when you're getting pounded. Also, Kles managed to master Tiger Fang. Not really surprising, that's usually the first ability I master because it's so useful. So I started just spamming Demonic Blade to get it, you know, up to 100% because I want to show off Demonic Fangs. We'll get that soon enough. And that pretty much covers it for what happened while we were grinding. It only took about a half an hour of grinding, so I was kind of impressed. It usually takes a little longer. Let's talk to the innkeeper now that we have the Basilisk Fangs. Hey! Or scales, not fangs. Aren't those Basilisk scales that you have there? Why don't you stay here for the night? It's on the house, of course. I'm sure that Edward will be back here by tomorrow. Yeah, go ahead and stay. I'll have someone keep watching the village. And we get a free heal for our trouble. That's not too bad. Plus, Edward has returned. Hey. Was it you? You donated all of those precious scales? Edward looks a little familiar, doesn't he? You're Edward, right? Actually, have a look here. Morrison? Yeah, he looks exactly like Morrison. My name is indeed Morrison, but why is it that you're both so surprised by that? Oh, um, well, uh, you're both acting strange. Edward, before we discuss the scales, have a look at this letter. An introduction from Grom, huh? If you've come this far to find me, there must be some reason, right? Yes, if you don't mind. Let's speak in the back room. Oh, so you were the ones who saved Prince Layard. Yeah, little did we know it came with a prison term. <laughs> You even have a punchline to go with it. Well, I think I've got the general idea of the situation. So, do you know of any way to fix them? Compared to tracking down the rings, repairing them should be a simple matter. From the look of them, those rings were used to form packs with rather powerful spirits. However, they've already fulfilled that purpose and can't be reused easily. At any rate, those rings were the product of a collaborative effort between the now-deceased dwarves and the elves. Meaning? Meaning that you'll need to visit the Emir Forest and meet with the elves. If anyone has a way to repair those rings, it's them. Meet the elves? Entering the forest is completely forbidden! Well, just ask Lundgrim. With official permission from Alvanista, you'll be allowed in. I see. But really, I can't thank you enough for these basilisk scales. Before the war breaks out, it's my intention to gather as many powerful allies as I can in Midgard. If possible... Huh? If possible, I'd like to ask for your cooperation as we prepare for war. But I don't want you to feel like I'm forcing you. Well, 
If the opportunity arises, perhaps we'll meet again someday. And Klesko's running after him. Morrison! Was there something else? Please, take a look at this. I'm sure you'll find it worthwhile. It's a rather dusty old book. Hmm, is this my handwriting? And my signature? Trinix D. Morrison. That's the name of the man that left this book in my care. Morrison, you say? He's your descendant. He was the one who sent me from the world in which I lived to this era, to the past. Time travel? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'm researching that alone, and it's still not complete. But in the future, the Morrison that I knew had access to the completed research. If what you're saying is true, that's even more of a reason not to read that book. Huh? Arch, there's still something that we haven't told you. Kless and I were sent to this era from our time, 100 years in the future. Do you believe me? Say what? So, in other words, that means... In your world, I'm like a hundred-year-old granny? <laughs> oh my gosh, Clark's reaction. Our presence here is possible only thanks to the power of Edward's descendant. You're saying that you know the outcome of the war, right? If someone were to know the outcome of an event before it happened, they could change the future. That's why I don't want to know a thing about what's to come, even if it means I lose everything. I don't know if my descendant was a close friend of yours or not, but I assume your goal is to save him, right? Changing history itself in the process, if it were me, I would feel the same way. If you wanted, you could change the whole course of history with what you know. I, I wouldn't want to go that far. There's no need to explain, as I said. I understand your feelings perfectly. The fact that you're standing here before me with the desire to defeat Deos is proof enough of that. Morrison, please wait for us in Midgard. We'll be there to join you. We'll lend you our strength. You all... Do you have any way to return to your own time? To the future? we don't resolve the current situation, that'll be the least of our worries. Alright, then by the next time we meet, I'll have the means to send you back. After all, if my descendant can do it, it should be a simple task for me, wouldn't you say? Haha! <laughs> and to think I was about to give up my research on transference. Good luck. Yeah, same to you. Well, Shall we return to Alvinista, then? Let's ask Lundgrim if he can get us the official approval to enter the Elven Village. Alright! And we're next going to Alvinista. I'll just jump cut and meet you over there. And we've arrived back in Alvinista once more. Let's go ahead and head up to the castle and go meet with Lundgrim should know the pathway to the sorcery lab really well by now. Just run right through. Hey! Hey, get out of my way! Here we go. Head on down to the lab and... Lord Lundgren, could we have a moment of your time? Sure. Go right ahead. Did you manage to track down Edward? Actually, that's what we needed to talk to you about. I see. In that case, Let's continue this discussion outside. Edward, that bastard. It figures he'd suggest something like that without even consulting me about it first. Then, is it possible to get the permission needed to enter the Emir Forest? Yes. If you can wait, I'll have it prepared by tomorrow. 
there are a lot of formalities involved, you see. So apparently we're kind of putting Lundgrim out a bit, but, I mean, not like we really have a choice. This seems like the course of action we have to take. So, since he said he'll have it ready tomorrow, let's go to the inn and spend the night. Welcome. One night is 60 gold. Please, enjoy your stay. Why, thank you. I will. I don't know why I got all weird about that. <laughs> We're just very happy to be staying at this inn. But now that it's the new morning, once again, you know where we're going. Up to the Sorcery Lab. At this point, if you don't know the way to the Sorcery Lab, well, I can't help you. <laughs> it becomes second nature when you have to come this way, you know, several times. Sorry for the wait. As long as you have this, they should let you in. Also, I don't really know how to put this, but... Half-elves are absolutely forbidden from entering the Ymir Forest. You obtain the Emblem of Kingdom of Elvenista. This key item will actually grant us entry. Although that half-elf thing, you know, that might pose a little bit of a problem. And this time we actually have to leave the castle instead of being taken outside for our little chat. That half-elf stuff was about me, right? Sorry. It's no big deal. I'll just wait at the inn until you get back. We'll hurry back as soon as we're done, so hang in there. Arch will be leaving the party. Do you want to change her equipment? You can choose to remove her stuff, ah, so you can equip it on someone else if you want. I really don't care to. I mean, the Mithril Mesh, we've got one on uh, Mint as well. Her headgear, her hand gear, all this stuff, I mean, not really a big deal. So, nah, you can keep your gear. And she said she'll be waiting at the end. Let's go take a quick look at her. Just, you know, check in, make sure she's doing okay before we leave. Yeah, she's just hanging out here. Hurry back now, okay? Alright, then I guess... Task for us is to head on out of the city and... Oh, what's this? <laughs> she's getting up to something sneaky. But that's where we're going to have to end the episode today. We have managed to do quite a lot, got a bunch of basilisk hunting in, found out what we need to do to hopefully repair the rings and find the city of the elves. Next time, we're heading off to the Emir Forest in the hopes of enlisting their aid. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.